Back to the shores of Lake Mead, Las Vegas, Nevada, and the Budweiser could take the national title on this next heat. Everything's on the table, guys. Uh, well, we're going to be uh, take our time and see what we can do here. We need a fifth, and that's all we're shooting for. The Miller American and Chip Hanauer is hands tied right now. Even if he wins every heat today, all the Budweiser needs is a fifth place, as Kropfeld said. 113 points. He could get 127 at number five. Kropfeld strapping in one more time here. An amazing story here. The Miller American and the Budweiser have met very, very few times in preliminary heats in 1987. They've already done it two times in a row. This will be the second time today in just one race. And here they go again. Kropfeld on the outside. Miller American back in the pack. And here comes Kropfeld for the start. Right on the button that time. On the way outside is the Budweiser. Moving up on the inside, it is the Oboy Alberto along with Ron Snyder and the Holson, Mrs. Madison. But on the outside again, the Budweiser and Kropfeld really wired that start as he goes into the first turn. Moving up on the inside. Here comes the Miller American in lane number two. Lane one is the Oboy Alberto on the right of your screen. The Budweiser still in first place. Keep in mind now, the Bud only needs 113 points to pick up the national championship. He could finish as low as one, two, three, four, five, fifth place, pick up 127 points and win the national title. Hanauer on the inside, fighting to win the battle. The Budweiser hoping to win the war as Kropfeld staying on the outside, still with first place in this heat, third place with the Oboy Alberto and George Woods trying to get points after being penalized in that earlier heat for hitting a buoy, which he claims he did not do, that the water and the spray from his rooster tail is what hit the buoy. In the meantime, this is the leader. The Budweiser in the backup boat, Jim Kropfeld out of Cincinnati, many times has been inducted into the APBA Hall of Champions, a national champion last year, a national champion back in 1984. And here comes Chip Hanauer in the middle, American on the inside, hoping to at least take the heat victory as he moves away in the backup middle, American boat, the boat that brought them their sixth straight gold cup victory last week in San Diego on Mission Bay. Hanauer in first place, but right behind him, what appears to be inevitably the world champion, that being Jim Kropfeld and the Miss Budweiser. Staying outside, away from any kind of trouble with the Miller American, the rooster tail, turbulent water, you name it. All he needs, there's one of the crew members, and obviously telling Jim Kropfeld, all you need to do is finish. Get at least a fifth place, and you've got the national title. All the beans in one preliminary heat right here on Lake Mead in Las Vegas, Nevada. An hour who went through a great deal of frustration in 1987 coming out with a new boat the boat just quite simply didn't perform well enough for their camp could not keep up with the budweiser and then suffered damage to the spar which holds the sponsons together out in front of the driver what we talked about earlier today in dealing with the cellular one and they had to go to the backup boat and it has performed beautifully as you can see it's still even rough for this boat miller american in first place coming down to complete heat 2a It'll be Hanauer winning the battle with another 400 points, 800 for the day. But let the celebration begin in the Budweiser camp. Here comes Jim Kropfeld, the 1987 world champion. Jim Kropfeld and the Budweiser. Third place, the Oboy Alberto. And congratulations to the Bud team, their second straight national title. Bernie Little can relax now. The owner of the Miss Budweiser, they got the points they needed, and the national championship belongs to Bernie. Congratulations, Dave, and the entire crew. The Miller American winning the heat, Alberto coming in third, and the rest of the field. Let's go down to the national championship camp. Oh, a happy camp to say the least, the second straight national high point championship for Bernie Little, and of course his driver, fine driver Jim Crawfield. Bernie? You have to be elated. Oh, yeah, how can I tell you? I mean, you've seen what we had to do and what happened last week with upsetting Miss Budweiser and for Jim to go out there and take the backup boat, wind up as a world champion in National High Point. We're fantastic and very happy, and thank Jim for one great job. <laughs> Jim, now you're going to tell us what this blue bandana means now the season's over? Season's not over yet. <laughs> well, you're We're national champion. Well, That's right. <laughs> you're still going to wait till the end. That's right. You gotta win this race yet, Jim. The mystery continues. <laughs> National High Point driver and the boat, the Miss Budweiser, Jim Cropfield, for the second straight year, decided right here on this very course. Now let's go down to Don Poyer and the Miller Camp. Don? You're finishing strong, but uh, not enough in time, I guess, is the best way as Budweiser wins the national championship. 
Yeah, well, we knew going into the day that was something that was out of our control, and we tried to have the philosophy of not worrying about things that we can't control, and we never really did consider the national championship. We were just trying to win the boat race. On the other hand, you're having a great send-off or kickoff for 1988, bringing in the uh, the other crew from Houston working on the turbines. You're you're really on a roll right now. Right, comparatively, anyway, from where we were at the beginning of the year, and uh, no matter what happens today, I think the team now is on a more positive tack, and uh, we just have to keep that going. So the world championship has been decided, but we have much more racing here on Lake Mead, so stay with us. This is the Continental High Performance Corner. A closer look at the fastest race boats in the world. For our high performance this week, we have a gentleman who has literally seen it all in many, many years of hydroplane racing. The head referee, J. Lee Shaneth out of Detroit. And Lee, we have gone through a very significant year in the fact that we've had three serious blowovers. And yet, not only did the driver survive, but in Jim Cropfeld's case last week, he walked away from it. And Steve Reynolds is going to fully recover. This is a whole new era in hydroplane racing. Well, there's no question without the enclosed cockpits, I don't think either of them would have survived, especially Steve. His, his crash was so severe and damaging to the boat and everything. Uh, I hope these owners and designers can get them stop blowing over. But thank God we have those cockpits for the drivers. Now, uh, in 1988, they plan to have all boats with these canopies. It's costly. It's not easy to do. And yet... They went ahead and enforced that for 1988, right? Well, I, they're going to they're gonna try and do it. There may be a couple exceptions. Some of these old boats, I don't believe it's possible, but they're working on design now. The new boats positively must have them. And really, I don't want to give you a cost figure because I don't know positively, but they're cheaper than what I thought. And one of the burning issues of 1988, how will other camps be able to put canopies on their boats? Mitch Evans, one of the drivers that will be enclosed next year, hopefully. And Jack Schaefer in the Kenny Toyota heading out. Time for Heat 2B. Six boats coming into Heat 2B. And once again, the Cellular 1 and Mr. Pringles will lock horns as they come around the north turn. The rest of the field, the Kenny Toyota, Pepsi America's choice. Here they come for the start. It looks like the Mr. Pringles is on the inside. The Cellular 1 is way back as they come up for the start. It's a good start. Everybody a bit late, as a matter of fact. Behind the buoy as the gun sounds. Going into the first turn, it's the Mr. Pringles with the lead. That's the lighthouse in on the outside. Kenny Toyota way outside. The U66, the Sutman Spirit in its debut. That's Mike Hansen out of C. Seattle getting his first ride in a turbine. They've been trying to qualify that boat since Syracuse, New York, but everything is working for them now. Look at it go behind the rooster tail of the lead boat, the Mr. Pringles. Down the back, so you see part of the, the fairing which holds the rear wing for the Mr. Pringles. The cover over it is no longer there. The crew did not put it back on after some water damage, but what a race for first and second. Two turbines, the Pringles on the inside, Sutman Spirit on the outside. Third place to the second of one, and Larry Lauterbach in his first ride in the Unlimiteds. A veteran of many classes of limited driving, two and a half mod, the stocks, the five, six, seven liter, the Grand Prix, and now the Unlimited. And here's the lead for first and second. On the inside from Seattle, Scott Pierce with one victory in 1987. But on the outside, the youngster getting his first ride with a hot boat, that being Richie Sutman's Sutman Spirit out of Florida. And third place is the Seattle One and Larry Lauterbach driving for Steve Woomer. What a story for Mike Hansen. He moved from Seattle down to Florida to work for Richie Sutman's camp. Sutman making a great name for himself already in the world of offshore racing. Now making a big step into the Unlimiteds. And he is doing quite well. They have struggled all year to get this program together. They couldn't get it up on a plane in, in uh, Syracuse. They couldn't qualify it in the salt water down in San Diego. But now things are working for Hansen and company as he comes around the turn. Look out as, oh, the Mr. Pringles nips one of the buoys. It doesn't look like he has dislodged it or destroyed it, which would penalize him. He is still holding on to second place. That's Scott Pierce, and still in third is Larry Lauterbach in the Sailor One. But now, okay, we've just gotten word, as you see Danny Walters of the Sailor One team, that Scotty Pierce has been penalized one lap for evidently chopping off the Sailor One coming around for the start, coming out of the turn. All right, that's the ruling from the start-finish line. Head referee Lee Shaneth, as you see, Sato 1, as a matter of fact, slowing way down now, going down the back chute on the last lap. But the Mr. Pringles has been penalized a lap. He is not in second place. 
And we're going to have to straighten this out much like we had to straighten out Heat 1B. But the leader, this man right here, we know that for sure, the Sutphin Spirit out of Florida, Mike Hanson, the driver out of Seattle, his first ever, ever victory in the Unlimiteds. First place to him. And for the Mr. Pringles, they're going to have to go around one more lap. Unofficially, we've got this boat. The second of one coming in second. We'll have to wait and see. This is, the, this is the Mr. Pringles coming in, and you've got the crew. You can hear them tell them to go out. you got one more lap to go. Now he's got to fire up that marine turbine one more time. Get out there. He's got really plenty of time. You have 15 minutes to complete a lap or at least stay on a plane. If he can get up in time, he'll go ahead and hit the points. My goodness, what a day. Well, let's at least go to the winner. We know that for sure. That's Sutphin. The Sutphin Spirit, along with the Lighthouse incoming in second place, the Kenny Toyota, Pepsi America's Choice, and then the Cellular One struggling, but finally finishing. What a day. Down to the pits. Hey, Mike. Hey, Mike. Woo. Mike Hanson, congratulations. How about that first seed win? Ah, that's great. I love it. <laughs> yes, we got this thing running great. Well, I, know all all the, I know all the frustrations you went through, like in Syracuse, elsewhere, and now oh. you're finally hitting fruition. <laughs> a whole lot of summer, a whole lot of work is what it was. And the guys at Sutton Marine just helped us put together a boat that just works. Well, we'll I'm sure we'll see you more rest of the day then. I sure hope so. Yeah. Thank you. Keep going, Mike. Congrats. Stay with us, Stay with us. Scott Pierce and the Mr. Pringles has completed his penalty lap, and Scott is very hot. Let's get a word from him. Scotty, you know what happened? Where was the ruling? I have no idea. I mean, it's I had lane one when I when I came on the start. I had lane one through the corner. I can only drive one boat at a time. I mean, we make up these rules as we go along, and I'm really getting tired of it. It's been that kind of day here on Lake Mead. We'll be back in just a moment. I had lane one when I got it. Welcome back to Lake Mead in Las Vegas. This gentleman right here owns the boat that finished second only a week ago in the Gold Cup, his best finish ever in the Gold Cup. you got to be happy about that, Jim Sedan. Oh, we were thrilled to death. We blew an engine in the first heat and we're struggling the rest of the day. And crew changed the motor for every heat, and it, it worked out real good. It was awful close <laughs> to sweet victory. Now, this week, you're really in the battle of a great fight for national points between the other piston engine-powered boats. You've got a lead by, what, 14 points among the other boats? Yeah, we got a 14-point lead, and, and in this draw, we drew four turbine boats, so it, it looks kind of bad right now. Uh, in uh, Seattle, I opted not to run the Constellation race because we were the second alternate. We lost 200 points right there, and it's coming back to haunt me right now. <laughs> Good luck, though. Thank you much, Don. And there goes Saddam's boat now, sponsored by Household Finance, Todd Yarling driving. Our last full heat of preliminary racing with six boats again, Miller American, Sutphin Spirit on down the line. In fact, we've just got word now, Sayada One is not going to be racing here. They do have damage to the spar, which holds the sponsors together. The Budweiser right on the button. Here comes the Miller on the outside. Both boats safe. The whole field is safe as they go down into the first turn. The Miller American on the way outside. Hanauer electing to stay away from the buoy line like he has done in the past, gone inside. This time to the outside. The long way around the turn, but he's got the boat speed the boat he knows to beat the field and i don't think anybody's doubting that especially with the budweiser driving the backup boat not the boat that gave them five victories in 1987 look at the lead already for the middle american and chip hanauer this boat the old boat as you see the budweiser setting a new world record of better than 155 miles per hour for an average qualifying lap down in san diego on a two and a half mile course that's the old boat that's after they brought in the new turbine specialist out of houston the Stuart Stevenson people came in and did an excellent job turning that program around for the Gold Cup, enabling them to win their sixth straight Gold Cup and to be the first team ever, and Hanauer the first driver ever to win six consecutive cups. In the meantime, he has first place here in Heat 3A. The Budweiser in second place with Jim Cropfield. No question, these two drivers are the best, period. The best and the fastest drivers in the business. This is one of the greatest young names coming up in Todd Yarling, who is in a battle right now for the national points lead for all of the piston engine powered boats. They're battling fellow Madison, Indiana boat, the whole set Mrs. Madison, as they call it this week, for the national points lead for the piston powered engines. 
But in first place with a turbine engine screaming behind him, Chip Hanauer out of Seattle, Washington, coming down to complete lap number two as the water is still very unforgiving here in Lake Mead. We were blown out of here last year. We had to come back and finish the race day on Monday. Average speed, 122.4 miles per hour after a 124 mile per hour lap on number uh, on the first lap for Miller American. Third place is the Sutman Spirit with Mike Hansen, who picked up a preliminary heat victory earlier, his first ever as an unlimited hydroplane driver. Hear the rumbling as the water hits the Sponsons? That's a new sound to unlimited hydroplane racing. In the past, these piston engines were so loud you could never hear that. But now with the quiet whistle of these turbines, you can hear a lot of different strange sounds, and that's one of them. The water rumbling as they hit the running surface back in the back of the boat, the transom, and of course on the sponsons. Another American, whether or not this boat will be retired at the end of this day, nobody knows. This boat most certainly will. It'll become a display boat as Bernie Little plans to build yet another Miss Budweiser, maybe even to replace the boat that did so well for them in 1987. The Miller American and Hanauer coming around the second turn for the final time on these three lap preliminary heats. A new format which was tried in Madison, Indiana last year, then tried here in Las Vegas. A lot of people like the idea. It gives, uh, it gives the fans more starts, more excitement, and simply more racing. But here's the Miller American, another 400 points, a perfect day for the Miller and the Budweiser. Second place to Jim Cropfield with an average speed of better than 109. Third place, the Sutman Spirit, Mike Hansen out of Florida. And fourth place, the Household Finance Corporation, Todd Yarlick. Here are the numbers. Another 400, 300, 225 for the Sutman Spirit. Mike Hansen very quietly having a good day. Household Finance, it's going to be a battle to make the final. The Lighthouse in and Cellular One unable to start because of the damage to the hull. Down to the pits. Well, after making it three for three, I guess we have to ask you what's down the road for a haul and engines next year. Uh, for what? I'm sorry. <laughs> I said now that you went three in a row. What about it next year? You're going to go with the same haul and maybe put a canopy on it? Or will there be a new Miller American? Uh, you're about three hours too early to ask that question. Uh, right now, the only thing in our mind is trying to win here in Las Vegas. So uh, come back uh, about sundown. I maybe give you a better answer. We're going to get the answer at sundown, folks, as the drama unfolds. Congratulations, Chip. Thanks, Jim. Three in a row for Chip Hatter and Miller American. Don? And this is why the cellular one was unable to race. The repair work you can see going on with that right spar, trying to get it ready for the final. Back here on Lake Mead, next on the agenda is E3B. To look back at E3B, it was a tough, tough heat on half of the field. The Jackpot Garrett, the Kenny Toyota, and the Aboyo Birdo, all of them unable to finish. In fact, the Kenny Toyota unable to start. This one belonged to this boat, the Mr. Pringles. A frustrating day for Scotty Pierce after being what he felt was cut off in his first preliminary heat, then penalized for chopping off a boat in the second preliminary heat. Finally, everything clicked, and he went on to get all 400 points and make it into the final heat aboard the Mr. Pringles. This boat coming in second place was Ron Snyder and the Holson Mrs. Madison, the boat that is being retired at the end of today's race. That was Mitch Evans going by in the Pepsi, America's Choice. Here, Scott Pierce again in the Mr. Pringles. They will have a new boat in 1988, a turbine-powered boat, maybe even two boats. Who knows? I know that the Procter & Gamble people are very excited about unlimited hydroplane racing, and they have many products that they could use effectively in market as well as compete very well in unlimited racing as they are in NASCAR and other sports. This boat will be retired, and they hope to raise the funds in Madison, Indiana to build a new boat in 1988. So the numbers in Heat 3B, Pringles getting the victory, the Holson Miss Madison in its final preliminary heat. Hopefully uh, that boat will go on to the Hydroplane Hall of Fame. Then the Pepsi America's Choice and the other boats having problems. Back down to the pits. Day sounds like it's working out better for you, big guy. Well, I keep the referees off my back. Uh -oh, and watch let, out. Us, <laughs> let us run a race. I think we'll do fine. Uh, you know, I made sure I stayed out of everybody's way. I don't want to give them any reason to think uh, anything's out of line. So. You needed a first or a second to make the finals. Yes, um, I intended to win the heat. I try to win every heat that Mr. Pringles is in, so um, it was my object to win the heat. All right, Scotty. Congratulations. Thank you, Jim. Don? Scott will have some tough company in the final, like Mike Hansen, who drives the Sutphin Spirit. This boat is on a roll today, and, of course, the Budweiser, which has already picked up the national title. Back in a minute. 